here are my thoughts on 101 Dalmatians. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, the first, uh, Disney movie of the 1960s, um, and it's the first to use a, uh, an animation technique called, uh, xerography, which is basically, uh, kind of a way of them, uh, cutting corners, make it a little easier and cheaper to, you know, get the work done. Um, <coughs> and, you know, I don't do a whole lot of studying into, like, these techniques when I, uh, first, when I, like, first look at these movies. I mean, these are, like, yeah, these videos are, like, hot takes, but, um, these vlogs, but, um, I mean, it does have a very unique style, just like, uh, Sleeping Beauty did, but in a, in a slightly different way, like, uh, this one's got some very nice, uh, scenery, and, uh, you know, the scenery looks like, you know, fancy, uh, modern art paintings, um, and yeah, the, during the animation, you can, like, see the pencil lines, um, it kind of, uh, challenges the illusion a bit, but, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to look at at the same time, like, uh, yeah, like, you can see some little pencil lines here and there throughout much of the animation, if you, like, look very closely at the lines. <coughs> so, yeah, um, also, this is, uh, the second Disney movie to star Talking Dogs, um, and, you know, just a couple years after the first one, um, like, yeah, they did another movie with Talking Dogs just two movies ago, but anyway, uh, yeah, this is a, this is a fun little movie, it's, uh, it's not among my favorites, but I think it's good for what it is, um, I think I mostly like it for, like, the first half. <coughs> you know, I like, uh, how we set up the characters and, uh, you know, our introductions to, like, uh, Pongo and, uh, Roger and Perdita, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, I think they're, like, there's, I do think it's, uh, kind of an unfortunate implication at the beginning that, uh, like, Pongo has to, uh, find a girlfriend for Roger, mostly so he can, uh, he can get with a female dog himself, and then, like, there's the whole scene where <coughs> Roger and Anita fall into the lake, and, uh, you know, um, you know, Perdita seem, like, Perdita kind of seems, sees through Pongo's little trick, so, like, she's like, oh, no. <laughs> but, uh, like, it seems like out of nowhere, the two couples just fall in love. And, you know, we go right to a scene where they're getting married. Um, I would assume this is after some months of getting to know each other. At least some months. Um, I don't know. <coughs> but, uh, you know Disney movies. Um... So, um, and obviously, uh, Cruella de Vil is, uh, one of Disney's, uh, more famous, memorable villains. And yeah, I think she's, uh, like, she's got a great present, she's got a great design, um, you know, I like, I like basically her concept and just the, <coughs> you know, she's like a fashion designer or something, she likes, uh, like, She's also a fashion victim, or I don't know if she's a designer. I know she, yeah, I'm pretty sure she is in, like, the live-action remake, but, um, you know, she's, like, a serious fashion victim. Actually, I think she and Anita work together as, like, fashion designers. I, I don't know, but, uh, um, but yeah, she just loves fur... And I just love the concept of this villain. I think she goes great with this kind of story. And I love the length she'd go to just to skin some freaking puppies. Like, yeah, she just goes crazy and, like, hires two burglars to kidnap them. And, you know, that 
car chase scene at the end. It's like, this is uh, how far she'll go to skin some puppies. Um, <coughs> although, I think I mostly like her for, like, the first half of the movie. I think, um, I think near the end, she kind of spends more time just screaming at uh, her henchmen, um, uh, Horace and Jasper. Um, but, yeah, she gets a little grating by the end, but at the same time, she's just a very memorable villain, and, you know, there's no question, like, her legacy, and, uh, apparently they're, uh, planning to make a live-action Cruella de Vil movie, just like they did with Maleficent. And if it's anything like the Maleficent movie... <laughs> but, uh... Fingers crossed. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be good. Uh, and yeah, uh, maybe they'll make a good cover of uh, the Cruella de Vil song. Um, knowing uh, modern films, it'll be like dramatic and brooding, like Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil. No, hopefully it'll. <laughs> maybe. Maybe if they get, like, Michael Buble to sing the song or something, but, um... Yeah, anyway, um, I also really like Horace and Jasper. I think they're very good, uh, you know, henchmen villains. Like, they make very effective burglars, like, uh... But at the same time, they're very, uh... They're pretty incompetent at the same time. Like, well, I guess it's mostly for just, uh, when they're watching, uh... You know, they're watching this uh, TV show. And I do I do like the TV scenes in this as well. Like, it's kind of like a glimpse back into, like, late 50s, early 60s stuff. Um, you know, what they what kind of stuff was on TV. And, uh... <coughs> you know, the Thunderbolt show, and then this game show called uh, What's My Crime. Yeah, those are fun to watch you know, take a glimpse into what, uh, kind of shows are in this, uh, little world, um, and then the, yeah, the commercial for, uh, what was it called, Canine Crunchies, <laughs> yeah, I love those bits, but, um, but yeah, uh, Horse and Jasper, they're pretty incompetent, I'm, but I think their main incompetent moment was just, uh, you know, putting off killing the dogs when, uh, you know, they wanted to watch the show first. That's probably their most incompetent part. Other than other than that, they are they are like um, what's the word? They are just uh, trained mercenaries compared to uh, the the version of them in the live action remake. Although I will say this. Uh, Cruella in this version doesn't ham it up quite as much as uh, Glenn Close does in the live action remake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great villains. Um, and there's some fairly memorable side characters as well, like, you know, the cat and the, the really old dog. You know, they're like soldiers, apparently. Um, and yeah, some other slightly memorable characters that we see for, see for just a moment. I mean, we don't, we don't really get to know them much, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're memorable just for their, like, presence and stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, it, I think the movie kind of, uh, I think it mostly drags after the dogs save, save the puppies, like, yeah, the end p part where they're just, uh, running away from the bad guys, that kind of drags. I mean, we meet some slightly memorable characters along the way afterward, but still. Um, <coughs> but yeah, it does lead to a pretty nice uh, car chase scene, and yeah. Um, the story's nice. I mostly like it for, like, the first half. Um, and I got a real... Like, I have... I must praise the opening credits. Like, up until this point, all of the Disney movies had pretty plain opening credits. They might show, like, little, you know, 
paintings of like various characters. Um, but yeah, this one just goes all out. There's like a full on animation and there's all these, uh, you know, Dalmatian spots dancing across the screen. There's all these pencil drawings. Like, yeah, this one really, uh, takes the opening credits in a new direction. Um, and yeah, I know they, uh, become a little different as we, uh, go on with the Disney movies. Um, the next one's Sword in the Stone, which I, re if I remember correctly, the opening credits for that one are kind of the same as the previous movies, but, uh, um, then we get Jungle Book, and, uh, yeah, I think Robin Hood kind of has a similar opening credits as this one, but, uh, anyway, uh, <coughs> but yeah, I just love the opening credits in this movie. Um, um, so yeah, it's not like, it's not one of the best Disney movies ever, but it's definitely a fun little movie, and I can, I can see why it's popular with a lot of people. Um, I know a lot of people grew up with it. I did too. I also grew up with the live action remake, and, uh, yeah, I consider that kind of a guilty pleasure. Um, but yeah, this, I think it's a good movie. It's not great. It's just good. So, yeah, um, I give it a 7 out of 10 for good, just under 8 for great, yeah. And, yeah, if, if per chance you have never seen this movie, give it a watch. Or at least if you're, like, a fan of dogs. If you're a dog person, chances are you'll enjoy this movie. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I appreciate... Yeah, I think the good stuff outweighs whatever flaws might be in this movie. I think the main flaw the movie has is just, uh, it's kind of safe. But that's about it. Um, uh, and as usual, if I have anything to add, because I know uh, Disney movies have a lot to talk about, um, I'll bring them up in the comments. So yeah, uh, that's about it. Mash it and smash it, signing off.